Good day YouTube. This is the first of a series of videos I intend to do on redoing the electrical system in my boat. Nothing wrong with the electrical system as it was, but I wanted something a little bit special. I want to be able to charge my 24 volt trolling system from my 12 volt alternator that requires some specialized electronics. It's a long drawn out process. I'm going to do it in a series of videos. I'll do the battery installation first. I'll do the isolators next. And then I'll do the way I've set up the trolling motor, etc. In between them, I'm going to put out some fishing videos because after all, this is intended to be a fishing channel. So just bear with it. The series will be completed. We'll just have some videos interspersed with it, weather permitting. So let's get on and have a look at the first stage of this job. I'm going to put a Minn Kota motor on this new boat, or new to us anyway, it's a second hand boat. I need two new batteries in here for a 24 volt system for the motor. Now I've got one battery, I'm not sure whether it's a house battery or an engine battery. From what I've seen of the wiring, I don't think it matters, I think they're just sort of dual purpose. Both batteries are the same certainly. We don't have a cranking battery and a deep cycle battery. They're identical batteries. I've got one on this side. And hopefully you can see in under here, let's move some of this stuff out of the way, and there's the other one in under there. There's plenty of room, I'm going to put two batteries on this side, I'll move this one over, and I'll put the two Minn Kota batteries where that is, and I'm going to lose my spot for my tackle boxes. But that's fine, there's plenty of room in here, I'll find something else. When I say that I don't think it matters about the batteries, to uh, wire it up on a uh, manual switch, one of the normal isolator switches you get on boats, where you can have one battery or both batteries, or either battery rather, or both batteries operational. And the idea behind that is that you manually flip the switch over and run one battery as your house battery and the other battery for keep for starting your engine. And that's a great idea so long as you remember to turn the switch, but personally, I never remember. So I am going to rewire that entirely with an automatic isolator and a special uh, system for charging my 24 volts at the same time. I'll take you through that probably in another video. For this one, we're just going to sort the batteries out. Just undone the strap that holds that battery in place and dragged it out here. And I'll say one good thing right off. They've been generous enough with the battery cables to leave me enough slack to get it right out here where I can work on it. And that's a good thing because I've worked on a lot of boats over the years where they've been that stingy with a battery cable. You had to actually crawl in underneath and undo them in order to get the battery out. And back in the days when you had uh, batteries you had to service with water and not the AGMs, that was a real pain. Speaking of which, that is a downside on this. This battery requires servicing. I don't know whether it's ever had any, but while I've got it out, I will be taking the tops off and just checking the water levels in them. Let's do one right now while we're on the video. And yes, it has, it has water in it. I'll assume the rest are the same. I'll do them off the video. I'm going to take these leads off here now because this battery has to go around in on that side. With that generous amount of lead, I'm going to have more than enough. I might even end up shortening the leads a little bit rather than have them flop around. But I'll certainly be leaving enough to pull the whole battery out so that I can inspect it from time to time. It's pretty hard to film down in there while I'm working, but I've got that battery over there. I've unthreaded the cables from uh, the other side of the boat, and I've decided to leave them the full length for now. I might amend that when I put the rest of the electrics in for controlling the uh, isolation of the batteries. But for now I'm going to leave them the full length in case I need some of that for putting the proper isolators in. This boat's been wired properly, as have most boats I've worked on with red positive but I have seen some bodgy jobs done by backyard mechanics where you can't count on red being positive so you really got to trace the battery through. Just be aware of that if you're doing a second hand boat. Uh, this one's good. Most of the boats I've had but I have seen one, have owned one, where the electrics were less than desirable let me say. And I'm sure there's other boats out there like that so just be aware if in doubt, trace your battery cables through and just make sure what they're connected to. 
Okay, so that side of the boat that I've got in there is a 12 volt system. Will eventually be a dedicated engine battery and a dedicated house battery with the ability to swap them over in case I need to start the engine and the engine battery's flat. Here are my batteries that I'm going to use for the Mincota. Now I've had these batteries about a year. Been a great battery. They're an AGM battery. And I'll put a link in the video in case you're interested in getting some for yourself. Really deep cycle, 140 amp hour batteries. I've used the Mincota extensively and I haven't managed to flatten them yet. But these are a 24 volt system and whereas on the 12 volt system everything's connected positive to positive, negative to negative so that they're in parallel. Next thing to do is to get these into some cases. Oh, the other thing I've just mentioned is the tie down straps there. I've got one there and one on the other side for the original batteries. But I don't have any stainless steel screws at the moment so I'm just going to put off screwing the tie downs in until a day or two until I get some stainless steel screws. So I can't get these into some battery boxes and start connecting them together and locating them where they're going to go at least. Let's point out that this battery box here is a little bit larger than the other one and it came with a little keeper in here in case your battery's small and it's got a number of slots in here. The other battery box has the slots but it didn't come with a keeper. I think that the battery will fit in there. I'm going to try dropping it in. If it doesn't fit there, I'll take the keeper out and it might need to pull length. This box is slightly larger than the other one. It was also cheaper. This is a better box of the two and I'll put a link to this box in the video in case you want to get one. You can go down to any size battery. It'll even take the really small ones if you put your keeper in up on these. So yeah, very good. I'm quite happy with this box. I'm sorry I bought the dearer one. Now this is the hold down strap that came with the cheap battery box. And I was wondering about these two buckles there. It's got that buckle there, and it's got this other one there. And it's got that sort of hook. If you can see it, that hooking underneath there. And I was wondering what the... You can see it there, I think. I was wondering what that sport looked like the other buckle fitted into it. And I was trying to figure out how you'd assemble this. And fortunately, I found that I have one that's already assembled. And that's it there. The serrated buckle part goes on top. The other piece hooks into the bottom and the strap goes over the top around the cross member in the bottom buckle over the top of the rest of the bottom buckle over the top of the serrated buckle and then back out through underneath. You can see the tag end coming out there and that's how they fit together and get their lock up on it. Really very neat. There it is, they're all fitted together. I had to do it off camera because I didn't have a uh, tripod here at the moment. But it went together really easily. And just as good as the professionals can do. I've got those batteries positioned back in there and I've extended one strap to go around both of them. I'm hoping that's going to work alright but we'll find out shortly. If not, the straps are only joined at the buckle, so I'll just unbuckle them and put one around each one. That's in position, and I may even have room for my tackle box in there. That'd be great, because that'll keep it right out of the road. If you've got a boat, as you know, space is always at a premium. Well, there's the battery boxes in place, and my tackle boxes still fit in over there, which is a really good thing. Quite happy about that, it keeps them right out of the road. I have one other tackle box that I'd like to fit in and hopefully that's going to fit over the other side or vice versa. I'll put the tackle box that I use the most on this side obviously and might have to rearrange the contents a bit. You never want to be up there fishing and find you've not got the tackle that you want. So anyway, there we have it, two batteries. I did use a strap on each battery. Once I tried it I figured it was just easier to strap each battery down separately so that's what I did. I've only got them on loose at the moment because I've got to get them out again to connect the mincoder up. I've still got a bit of work to do on that. I haven't made them out for the front of it yet, but I can run the wires. I just need to get some marine ply or aircraft ply and make myself some brackets to mount all the switching and circuit breakers on that I need back here for the complete job. So I'm not, I'm just putting the batteries aside until I get that done. Well, thanks for taking the time to watch this episode. 
this was actually the trivial part of the work. It's just something to get it started. We get into the real nitty gritty of it in the next episode with the isolator set up. Now, if you planned overnight on your boat, or if you have a really serious electrical setup on your boat, then you really need an electrical system like this. So if you don't want to miss another episode on it, the next episode's one of the really important, well, the next few episodes are really important to the setup. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and click the bell notification so you know when the videos go up. With any luck, I'll get some fishing videos done. I'll get out and do some catch some fish, get some fishing videos done in between these episodes. But they will all go up eventually. I've got all the footage shot. I've just got to edit it and put it together in a sensible manner. So, until next time, good fishing. <laughs>